Welcome to this brand new series called Mini Hacks Solved. And in this episode, we are going to solve a mini hack that is build a word cloud using Lightning Web Components. But first, what are mini hacks? Mini hacks is one of the most popular hands on areas at Dreamforce and Trailblazer DX. Once attendees come into this area, they can pick a hack based on their expertise or skill level. And this hack contains a small business problem and a set of requirements on how to solve this problem. And these requirements are not as detailed as they are on Trailhead. They just tell you what has to be done, but not how it has to be done. Let's now look at the requirements for word cloud with lightning web components. So here, uh, the business wants to build a home page that is visually appealing to its users. As a part of this, they want a tile that shows recently accessed records in a fun way. And your job is to build a component for this where recently accessed records are shown in a word cloud. Pretty straightforward. Now, diving into the requirements. So this challenge requires a Salesforce org, quite obvious. You can use an existing org or new one. Uh, we'll see, we'll try to create a new one. Create a lightning web component named recent records that can be added only to the home page. Uh, an admin should be able to configure the following properties from the app builder. Uh, the number of records, a value between one and 15 and the object name. So it looks like once this component is added to the app builder, the admin should be able to configure uh, what object records have to be shown and how many of them. So we'll have to use Apex to query for recently accessed records based on the object name, of course. Uh, the admin selects the object and the number of records. We fire an Apex query to get uh, the records based on the parameters that have been selected. Then add a lightning card with the title recently accessed object names, which means uh, it'll either have to show recently accessed accounts, contacts, or leads based on whatever object name has been selected. And finally, use this external JavaScript library. So it looks like there is one external JavaScript library, uh, which will help us show the names in a word cloud. And there is a documentation apparently. So looks like it's a GitHub repo uh, with a readme file and stuff with the documentation. So it's good. The size and weight of the words must be in a decreasing order of the corresponding records access date. For example, the most recently accessed record should show up as the largest word. Okay, so let's say there are 10 records that are being shown. The most recently accessed record must be the bigger word in the word cloud. And based on the record access date, the words must be in decreasing order, okay? Upon clicking the name in the word cloud, redirect the user to the records detail page. Uh, it's a good requirement. So why are you showing things in a word cloud if they are not clickable? Okay, so uh, the requirements um, look straightforward. Um, again, uh, there might be multiple solutions uh, to these requirements. I will be showing one of those many. If you find any other elegant solution or if you can think of a more elegant solution, please drop it down in the comments section of this video. Okay, so first things first, let's start by creating a new project and an org. Um, so here we are in VS Code. Let's create a new project using the command palette, sfdx create project. Uh, let's choose a standard project and give it the name mini hacks solved and then choose a location where this project must be created. Let me choose code, which is where I create all my projects. And the project is created. So next, uh, I can either attach an existing org to this project or create a new scratch org. So in case you want to attach an existing project, an existing org, um, you could always go to the command palette and say SFDX authorize an org then the org will be authorized and attached to this project. Um, but in this case, I want to create a brand new scratch org. Now, before doing that, I quickly wanted to go to the scratch definition file and add an attribute here called has sample data. 
and set it to true. Now the reason I'm doing this is when an org is created, um, if this attribute is enabled, the org will automatically have sample data that you typically find in all of your developer orgs. This saves me the time of creating all the test data. So the definition file is now good. So let me again go to the command palette and create a new default scratch org. Give it an alias, mhsolved and seven days is good enough. And let me create an org. And done. So now we can get started by creating our web component. Um, as per the requirement, we are supposed to create it with the name recent records. So let me copy that. And I go to the command palette, select create new lightning web component, give the name, choose the folder and our component is created. Now this component must be added only to the home page. So I need to add the relevant targets. So for that, I'll go to the meta file and I'll set is exposed to true uh, to mark this component as a public component. And then for targets, I don't remember the syntax. So let me just uh, Google for it. So LWC targets, um, configure a component for the app builder. I think that is the documentation link that has the target information. So here you go. I just copy these targets, paste it here. And since I only need it on the home page, let me remove the other two and save. Now the next thing is the admin should be able to configure the following properties. So the object name and number of records must be set from the app builder. So for that, what we need to do is first and foremost, create two properties. So first is the object name and the number of records. And both of these properties are private by default. So to mark them as public properties, you need to add the API decorator. Now the next step is to expose these public properties to the app builder. Now in order to do that, you need to modify the meta file and specify the target configurations. So the syntax for that is again available on the developer website in the documentation. So here I'll copy paste all of this target configurations so that I can modify it. So we'll need to update the target configuration for the lightning homepage. So let me modify this a little bit. So let me take the homepage tag from here and say this target configuration applies to the homepage. So let me remove this and all of this is not needed. So what I'm specifying here is for the target of home page, uh, this is a property that has been exposed to the app builder. Now the name of the property in the XML file must match the name of the public property in the JavaScript file. So let me make that change. And since we have two properties that we need to expose, let me create those two properties. Now the name is done. Now, when it comes to the type here, right now, both of them are defined as type string, but according to our requirements, the number of records must be a value between one and 15, which is an integer. And the object name must be a drop down with the values account, contact and lead. So now how do I do that? So for that, the answer is again present in the documentation. Uh, you can click on this link over here, XML configuration file elements that is going to give you the complete list of all the attributes that you can pass to the property tag. So if you scroll a little bit to the bottom, um, you can see for the target configuration, there is event and then there is property. So for property, um, you can see there is a data source attribute which is going to render the field as a pick list with static values. So if you look at the syntax here, it says property name, the type is string, but then there is an additional data source attribute with comma separated values, 
which then get rendered as a pick list and you can optionally specify a default value as well so let me copy that and for the object name i add these attributes so for data source i need account comma contact comma lead and i want the default to be account now when it comes to number of records um, let's look at the possible types that we can give you can see we can either give boolean integer string and others which are not required for now so here let me just copy integer and define the type now for this integer as well there is additional criteria where there has to be a minimum value of 1 and maximum value of 15 so if i scroll to the list of attributes you can see there are attributes for minimum and maximum and it is only allowed for type integer which is what we want so we say the minimum is 1 and the maximum is 15 so that's the step one and i think there is a requirement here that says add a lightning card with the title recently accessed object names so let's do that as well because our html file is right now blank so we can add the lightning card uh, which is a base component and if i hover over this you can see all the attributes that lightning card allows so in that there is a title attribute which is what we are going to add and this title must be dynamic based on the object type that is chosen so the way i can do that is within my javascript file i can define a get variable so um, get card label is what i will define the property name as and then this is going to return a dynamic string which is recently accessed object name and s so this is another syntax for string concatenation you can put the backtick operator and then use the dollar sign and curly braces to specify the dynamic properties name so that it's going to look more clean so i'll use this getter property over here and that's pretty much the first step where i've created a basic component i've created a lightning card and the label is dynamic based on the object name let me now push this code to the org so for that i can use the command sfdx4 source push because it's a scratch org if it was a non-scratch org you would right click and say deploy component to org so the component is successfully deployed now let's go ahead and see how this works uh, to open the org i can directly click on the window icon inside vs code instead of having to type the command sfdx force org open so let me just click this and the org is going to open up in some time so once the org is open um, let's go to the home page so i can open up any app and let me go to the app builder by clicking edit page now in the list of components if i scroll down i can see the recent records component uh, is available to me now as a part of the custom section i can just drag and drop it over here and you can see it shows recently accessed accounts and the properties on the right hand side account has been selected as default if i change it to contact you can see the label is automatically updated to recently accessed contacts let's keep it account for now and for number of records let me try to pass in 20 and you can see it says enter a number from 1 to 15 so our validation is also working correctly so let me give the value of 10 for now and click on save because this is the first time i'm making changes to the home page i need to activate it and let me assign it as the org default now when i go back i can see everything is working as expected for now there is no word cloud which we are yet to add 
So the preliminary uh, set of the requirements is done where we created a component and we are showing something in the component. Now the next set is to actually query for the recently accessed records and then show it in a word cloud. Now here we are required to use Apex in order to query for these records. So let's do that. First things first, I need to query for the records and I need to know how the results are going to come in like. So for that what I can do is I can use the Sockel builder within VS Code in order to test my query. So I'll open the command palette and select create query in Sockel builder. And inside that, let me first try to see how I can query recently accessed accounts. So let me select account and in terms of fields, let me say ID, let me query the name. And now how do you find out if a record has been recently accessed? So along with the standard audit fields that you already might be knowing about like created date, last modified date, there is also an audit field called last viewed date, which is going to store the date when the record was last viewed. And a record is viewed whenever it is accessed. So let's use that date and run the query. So as you can see, uh, because there is sample data in my org, thanks to the has sample data attribute, I can see a bunch of results, but none of them seem to have the last viewed date. That is because this is a brand new org and none of the records have been viewed yet. So let me go back to my org, go to the accounts tab and try to open a record. So let me open the first record, Burlington Textiles Corporate of America. Now, since the record is opened, let me go back to VS Code and run my query again. And now you can see the last view date for the account is populated. So this is how I'm going to access the recently accessed records. So let me close the query builder and the query results as well. And let's create our Apex class. So again, command palette, SFDX create Apex class, give the class a name, recent records controller, and voila. We don't need a constructor, but we do need an aura enabled method because only aura enabled methods can be called from lightning web components. So to create an aura enabled method, you just need to start typing aura enabled. And if you notice in the suggestions, it shows you a code snippet called aura enable and you click that, the whole method is pre-created for you. You just need to change the method name. So let me call it get recent records. And now it needs to take in certain parameters. We need to pass in the object name and number of records from our lightning web component to the apex class. So let me add these two. So string object name, comma integer num records. And now we'll have to write our query to return the recent records. Now first let me, okay, we'll do this. Since the query is supposed to be dynamic, let's store it in a string. So let me call string query string and paste the query that we have copied from the circle builder. Now, if you remember, not all the records have the last viewed date populated. So we only need to filter out the records that have the last viewed date. So we'll put that in the where clause. So we'll say from account where last viewed date not equal to null. And then we need to order the results by last few date descending, which means the most recent record comes first. Now all we need to do, no, there is one more clause left. We need to limit uh, the number of records based on the parameter. So I've written my query. Now it's time to make this query dynamic. Um, so let me replace account with the object name parameter and limit with the number of records. So here my dynamic circle query is ready. 
and I use the database.query method to fire this dynamic SQL query and I'll put a return statement to return the results. Now since the results returned by this query is going to vary based on the object type that has been sent, I'm going to make sure the return type accommodates this by using the return type of S object. Since S object is the parent of account contact or the standard custom objects, using the S object as a generic return type can accommodate any other object types that you might pass in the future. So now uh, my Apex class is all ready. So let me push this to the org as well. And hopefully there shouldn't be any errors. And yep, uh, things have been deployed. Now our Apex class is ready. So we have the data we need, we have the component we need. So all we need to do is now show the data in a word cloud format. So for that, uh, there is this external JavaScript library. And over here, there are some usage instructions. Um, so in simple usage, what it looks like is you'll have to download the latest JavaScript file from the SRC folder of this repo. And then you will have to load this file on the web page and call a particular method. And this method seems to be taking in the ID of the element on which the word cloud has to be rendered and a list. And the list is an array that looks something like this. So we'll worry about this a little bit later, but first um, let's download the script. So from the SRC folder, we are supposed to download word cloud 2.js. So let's click on draw and save it. So in order to load a third party JavaScript library from your lightning web components, you need to upload it as a static resource. So let's do that. From setup, we'll go to static resources and upload our library. So we'll give it a name, choose the file and save. Now there is a syntax to load these scripts into our lightning web components. Again, I don't remember those. So let me Google for that. Load third party JavaScript in LWC. Again, you'll come across the documentation, which is the most valuable resource that all of us LWC developers have. So it says download the library from third party site, which we have done. Upload the library as a static resource, which we have done as well. Now we need to import this library. So let's go to JavaScript, copy the name, which is word cloud JS. And then the next step is going to be importing uh, these two methods from the platform resource loader. So let's do that. So technically we don't need load style because that is to load uh, style sheets. We only need to load JavaScript file for now. So let's remove that. And then you're supposed to call the load script method and take it from there. Now, in order to call this load script method, I'm going to do it in the rendered callback lifecycle hook of LWC. And let me paste the script here. Now the thing with the rendered callback lifecycle hook is that it's going to be called multiple times depending on how many times the UI changes. So which is why each time the rendered callback is called, you need not be loading the script again and again. We need to do it only once. So let's put a control statement. So we call it, we create a property called rendered and set it to false initially. And then if we create an if statement here that says, if this dot rendered, then return, which means the execution stops right there. If not, it proceeds over here. Here we set the this dot rendered property to true so that the first time the rendered lifecycle hook is called, 
the rendered property is false so it goes into this it sets the rendered property to true then it loads the script and once rendered callback is called again in the future because this property is already set to true none of these statements are executed again now inside load script you specify this and you need to put in your library over here so here let me replace my library with word cloud js now inside the then block the script has been loaded so i can call any method from the third party javascript library now let's go back to the documentation of the third party javascript library and as you can see here is the script that we need to run so let me paste this um, here it says document or get element by id my canvas but i'm not really sure what elements it understands so let me click on api documentation to see it in detail so here in usage we have we are calling the word cloud function and we are passing in the element and options now elements is the dom element of the canvas so it looks like it indeed is a canvas element and it can be an array which we don't need for now so it says if a canvas element is passed word cloud would generate an image on it if it is some other element then it would create a span element to fill it so it looks like it could be a div or a canvas as well we'll stick to canvas for now and then the second parameter is a list of options so in the options there is a list that has to be passed which is what we saw in the earlier syntax as well and the list is supposed to be a 2d array in the form of word comma size so what this means here is that a single word is represented with an array format where the word itself is going to be the name that is shown and the size is the size of the word that is rendered and since there are going to be multiple words it is going to be an array of array which is a 2d array and it also looks like you can send in some additional values instead of just word and size you can also send in data 1 data 2 which is good and you can also pass in callback functions okay so i think it is clear for now so let's do this uh, okay we've already pasted it uh, first and foremost we need a canvas element so let's go to html create a canvas element and to refer to this canvas element from javascript it's easier if it has a class attribute um, IDs again are not recommended within LWC because IDs are globally replaced whenever LWC renders. So we'll give it a class name. Uh, apart from the class, you also need to add an additional directive called LWC DOM and set it to manual because this allows the DOM to be manipulated using JavaScript and third party libraries typically modify the DOM using JavaScript. So we are done with that. So now document.getElementById is of course not supported in LWC. So we'll replace that with this.template.querySelector and specify the class name of our canvas element. And here we are passing a list. And if you remember from the documentation, the list is supposed to be an array of array. So we'll create this list and save. Now let me push this to the org and see if it works fine because it's a third party JavaScript library before making more changes. I need to know if this works. So it's pushed. So I come back. I go to the home page and refresh. Okay, um, it looks like something is rendered. So if I zoom in, I can see foo and bar are being rendered uh, because that's the data I've passed. Um, but they are extremely small. We'll have to do something about the size. So definitely 12 and six uh, might not work for us. We need to go a little bit more higher. 
Okay, so that's the first thing we've learned. And the second thing is now we need to replace this hard-coded data with data coming in from our Apex method. Now, as you know, there are two ways in which you can call Apex methods from Lightning Web Components. First is using wire decorator and the second is imperative. So in this use case, uh, my preference would be to call Apex imperatively, primarily because if you look at line number 22, it needs two things to execute perfectly. First thing, the script must be loaded successfully. The second thing, the data must be loaded successfully by the time this method is executed. Now, what happens in the case of wire is that wire executes on its own. So the moment your wire method is invoked, the data provisioned is going to be undefined. And later on, once the Apex method is called successfully, the data is going to be reprovisioned from the Apex method. And while this is happening, in parallel, your component is being rendered and your rendered lifecycle hook is being called and then your load script method is being called. And if you notice the load script method, that is also asynchronous because it is returning a promise. So it becomes difficult for you to track which operation is completing when and whether both are successful or not. So what you would have to do then is to create two properties. The first property is whether the data has been loaded or not and that you would set from wire. The second property, whether the script is loaded successfully or not, that you would set from within the load script method. And only if these two properties are true, you would execute this particular line number 22. Now definitely doable and it's going to work fine. But like I mentioned, the code looks a little bit more complicated. So I would rather call the apex method imperatively so that I am in control of the sequence of events. So what would happen? The rendered callback hook would be called. Then the load script uh, method would be called. And once load script method is successful inside this then block, I would then call my apex method imperatively. After the results have been provisioned from the apex imperative method, is when I would call the word cloud. So it would be a chain of events on which I have full control on. So let me do that. So first thing we need to import the apex method. So recent records controller. Um, so get recent records. From at salesforce slash get recent records. And then here, to call my apex method imperatively, again, there is syntax completion available in JavaScript as well. So I just need to type in LWC hyphen imperative apex. A basic block is pre-created for me. So let me call the get recent records and I need to pass in the two parameters that is object name, which is this dot object name comma num records, which is this dot num records. Now inside the then method, I need to create this list of list. And then call the word cloud method. So this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Rendered callback, load script, and then it calls the apex method. And only once all of these are done, my word cloud function is being called. Now the next step is I have to transform this result into this 2D array because that's what the word cloud function is expecting. And if you remember as per the requirements, the size and weight of the words must be in decreasing order of the records access date. So the records that my apex method is returning is anyways going to be in the right order. So I need to define the weight, that is the second parameter, in decreasing order as well. And since we've determined that 12 and 6 are smaller sizes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, let word size is 25. And then I need an array of array, so I'm going to say let final list, okay, let list 
is an empty array and then I'm going to iterate over each and every record that is coming to me from Apex. So I'll use a for each loop for that. So result dot for each and inside that each element is going to be a record. Uh, so for every record I need to create this array where the first element is the name of the record and the second element is the size. So what I can do is I can create a new array let arr is equal to empty array and arr dot push um, record dot name which is the first element of the array and arr dot push word size which is a size and once a word has been pushed I automatically need to decrement the size so let me say word size minus minus and then this array needs to be pushed to the final list because it then makes a 2D array. So then I say list dot push arr. Okay, so now I can push this code and see if it works fine. So let me go back and refresh. So right now I have only accessed one record if you remember so at least that one name must show up and there you go um, it shows Burlington Textiles Corp now let's say I access um, some other account let's say gene point and then let me also access S force so now S force should be the largest word and Burlington Textiles Corp must be the smallest. And that's what it looks like. Um, but it's not very clear. Uh, primarily because we are reducing the size only by one perhaps. Uh, let's make those tweaks a little bit later. Uh, let's now look at the final requirement that we have where upon clicking the name in the word cloud, the user must be redirected to the detail page. So let's go back to the documentation of word cloud to see how we can do this. You can see here that you can send additional data as array elements in the form of word size data one, data two, which can then be used in the callback functions of click, which is what we are looking for. So what I'm thinking is we can send in the record ID as an additional parameter along with the name size so that we can use it in the click function. So how do I specify click? So let me search the documentation. It looks like there is a click event and it takes a callback of item dimension and event. Okay, um, so here in the word cloud syntax along with list, let me define the click interactive event. And because it takes in a callback function, let me create an anonymous function here. that then takes in three parameters as documented which is item dimension and event so i don't know how this behaves so let me just put a console log um, so let me put clicked and let me log the item parameter so let me do json dot stringify item and push the code okay so let me refresh the page and open the browser console in the meanwhile okay now once i click on s force it's saying clicked and it's returning me the actual element itself that I'm passing, which is as force comma 25. Okay, perfect. Um, so what we need to do here is then do array dot push uh, record dot ID. And here, let me replace this with constant record ID is item of two. 
because the record ID is the third element uh, in the array. I'm getting it from the index two. Now all I need to do is call the navigate method from LWC. So again, I don't know the syntax. LWC navigation. So I need to import navigation mixin. So let me do that. And then I need to modify the base class. Done. And then this is the syntax to navigate to the record detail page. But then you could also do that using syntax completion. So I just need to type in LWC hyphen nav record page so i just change the pre-created syntax i need to go to the detail page so view record id is this and the object api name is going to come in from the object name property that's already there in my class and it looks like i don't need these two parameters also Okay, so let me push the code and let me now refresh. So let me click on S4 and there you go. The navigation is successful. So looks like uh, pretty much we've completed all of the requirements. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is not the only solution to this hack. There are many other solutions and each and every person's code is different, thought process is different. So if you have better ways of doing this, please do let me know in the comment section. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever a new episode of our brand new series Mini Hack Solved comes out.